Good evening, everybody. This is H. Rod B. 50% of the brothers going to work at a job cool. And I'm here to tell you that this is going to be an awesome season this year. Well, this year, 20, uh, 2020. Happy New Year. We're about to start this year off awesomely. And I'm going to always give you information at the beginning of the show and a black history, a health information at the beginning of the show and black history information at the end. Here we go. Thank you for tuning in. H. Rod B. Buzz is going to work it out. How about you? Yeah, yeah. Greetings, brothers and sisters, family and friends, and the Minister of Wellness, Nathaniel Jordan. I want to start a mini series on chocolate. I want to start a mini series on chocolate. I felt it was important, especially during this week. We are slowly but surely coming to the end of the season of gluttony. The season of gluttony and loads and loads of chocolate is being consumed without an understanding of what is in the chocolate and how it is produced. And I believe this will be an eye-opening mini series for all of us. The truth about chocolate, how to choose healthy and ethically produce cacao products. And this is part one. So make sure you have clicked that notification bell so you can get the notifications of the new videos that come out do want to remind you all up front that we were only 13 days away from the big event. Yeah, 13 days away. I've been announcing this event since May. It is almost here. The Superior Health Fair and Seminar right here in St. Louis, Missouri. You still have an opportunity to use the promo code HOLIDAY by going to 2K20WeightLoss.Eventbrite.com and getting $10 off any ticket of your choosing 2k20 weight loss dot eventbright dot com we are only 13 days away i cannot wait to meet you all for many of us chocolate is one of the special pleasures in life i know it is for me i love chocolate it's delicious again it is being over consumed especially the wrong type of chocolate because that's mainly what we're going to focus on and it's being overconsumed during this time of the year, the season of gluttony. And chocolate does affect your mood. It can affect it neg negatively or positively. So we need to talk about the health benefits of chocolate. How can we enjoy it? Because it is connected to slave labor. Yes, sir. And environmental degradation on cacao plantations right in West Africa. Still going on. We are consuming chocolate way more in vastly different ways than the ancient Mesoamericans who first harvested and prepared it. And this, of course, has had delirious health consequences. But the question is, in its natural form, is chocolate bad for us? How much can we consume safely or do we need to just get rid of it altogether? And then we're going to discuss, again, the child labor, the slavery, extreme poverty and environmental degradation that's related to the chocolate trade. So the question is, even if you consume a natural chocolate such as myself, is it possible to do it guilt free without it being attached to slavery? If if the answer is yes, then how can we tell which chocolate products contribute to the welfare of chocolate farmers in their communities. We can't turn a blind eye to this. Or is it, has it reached a point to where myself and others, we just going to have to stop eating it, period. Okay? Unless, of course, we grow our own. But how many of us are going to grow and produce our own chocolate? The Theobroma cacao tree is native to Central and South America. Going to go over bit of history here. The Aztecs believe that the seeds were gifted from the God of wisdom. 
for centuries in pre-modern Latin America, cacao beans were considered valuable enough to be used as currency. Both the Mayans and the Aztecs believed that the cacao bean had magical properties suitable for use in the most sacred rituals of birth, marriage, and death. For much of its history, chocolate was served as a bitter drink, either heated or fermented into alcohol. When Columbus introduced cacao beans to European high society following his return from the Americas, it started a cacao craze that led to European colonization and enslavement of large areas of Mesoamerica and West Africa in the rush to grow and control cacao plantations. Now, the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, Europe applied new methods to chocolate production. Alkalizing salts reduced bitterness. The Dutch cacao process separated cocoa butter from the liquor and made it easier and cheaper to produce in large quantities. In the U.S., early 20th century inventors and entrepreneurs Milton Hershey, sound familiar? And Franklin Mars, what did they do? They turned chocolate from a local artisanal product into a mass produced industrial Frankenfood. Hershey's milk chocolate, in particular, combined with epic amounts of sugar, was sweet enough to convert an entire nation into chocoholics. And so now these days, Americans are consuming about $18 billion worth of chocolate each year. And that, that equals out to 10 pounds per person in a nation of 300 million people. And keep in mind, that's the average. Remember, some people don't eat chocolate at all. A lot of people are allergic to chocolate. So that means that we have a lot of people eating way more than that, double, triple the amount. There's some people that's eating 10 pounds of chocolate since so-called Halloween and all the way through the so-called New Year's. It's ridiculous. And yes, chocolate is delicious. But what is this doing to our health? Now, after everything that I just said, listen, chocolate has gotten an unfair bad rap. Just like soy. We take the natural, we screw it over, mess with it, synthesize it, overconsume it, and then we want to demonize it completely. People say it causes acne. People say that it's a junk food, but these accusations are not only undeserved and inaccurate, they falsely incriminate a delicious food that turns out to have profoundly important healing properties. There is, in fact, a growing body of credible scientific evidence that chocolate contains a host of heart-healthy and mood-enhancing phytochemicals with benefits to both body and mind. And for those of you all who want to know the truth about soy, I've done a video on that. It's in the playlist. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. The truth about soy. The Guna people of the San Blas Islands off the coast of Panama have loved cocoa for thousands of years. And to this day, cocoa beverages remain central in their diet. An International Journal of Medical Science article reported that despite intense poverty, the Guna who keep drinking cocoa in their home islands enjoy much lower death rates from heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, and cancer than those who give up their beloved drink when they move to mainland cities and suburbs. Again, chocolate is very similar to soy. The natural has been used by cultures around the world for thousands of years with excellent health benefits. But then here comes the Western so-called civilized culture. They take the medicine foods of the most high. They destroy it, manipulate it, synthesize it. Then we over abuse it and then we demonize the food completely. 
but it's the processing of it that has destroyed his health benefits, processing it and then over consuming it. But there's nothing wrong with it in the natural. We're going to stop right there and pick back up in part two on this series, mini series on chocolate. I received so many emails of people who were upset with me about my lose 100 pounds in 100 days book being out of stock that I went on ahead and, and put them back in stock until Friday. I really shouldn't be doing this, but I got a lot of emails of people saying, listen, minister, I've been waiting for this book to come back in stock for a whole year. Can you please put some more back in stock? So I went on ahead and from the second order that I place that I need for the events that I have around the nation, starting with my event January 4th, but the books will be in Friday. So for all of those of you all who have pre-ordered, the books will be in Friday. And I will mail them off priority mail. That's included in the price. And they'll also be signed by me and dated with a motivational quote. So they are back in stock until Friday. Once the books come in Friday, that's it. I have to put them out of stock. Because I need those books for my VIP attendees for January 4th, right here in St. Louis, Missouri. And then for the other events that I have, which, of course, I'll be announcing as the dates get closer. If you're not able to get it in these five days, then you're going to have to wait until spring until I'm able to put more back in the stock. That's the Minister of Wellness dot com, the Minister of wellness.com lose 100 pounds and 100 days revised and updated and again 13 days until the big event january the 4th 13 day countdown get your tickets now into the promo code holiday 2k20 weight loss dot eventbrite.com 2k20 weight loss dot eventbrite.com i highly encourage you to consider becoming a vip attendee because not only do you get your choice of a free book, DVD, or T-shirt, but also 25% off of a wellness consultation with me, your Minister of Wellness. 2K. We are Big Fitness Network for the strong, not the weak. Yo. Yep. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. As I stated earlier this week, I... I'm going to add some health advantages to each show. This is Bill for this network. I am H. Rob B. This is Brothers Gonna Work It Out tonight. The number one chief rocker has uh, taken off. He has some uh, pressing issues to deal with. He has some other things to take care of, some business to take care of. So, me and the homie and new, the brother and new, we're gonna do it together. Then, we the brothers that's gonna work it out. Everybody, thank you for joining in. Happy New Year. This has been real. I'll let you boy. Thank you. Happy New Year, folks. I got the brother and new on early. Today's show is called 2020 Vision. It is the vision that we have for 2020. You know, you hear a lot of people say stay on cold and things of that nature. And uh, the reason we're going to talk about that today is there should be a code of conduct in the community that you're involved in. And what I mean by that is this. We should protect each other from nonsense and nonsensical ideas and behaviors. And what we're going to do, me and the brother and what we're going to do tonight is we're going to hopefully outline some of that, some of those things that we would like people to stop participating in to make our, our community more productive, more inhabitable, and make it safe for our children, safe for our friends, family members, and each and every one of you. Hopefully these things can catch on. And when they catch on, again, our community be better. And uh, as usual, I'm gonna go over a few things. I wanna uh, welcome everybody to the show. Uh, let me go through the chat room and new before we start. As, the, as usual, our homie Joe from Houston is live and direct from Houston. Thank you, Joe. I got Ricky from Chicago, Illinois. Y'all know it as Tree Tree. She changed her name to Ricky 2010. Much love to Ricky 2010. 
And then I got my man yeah. from the Luth Coast, D Greatest, one of the dopest DJs in the history of the universe. He hold her down. I have Lisa Duke from the Garden State, New Jersey, in the building. I got Ray the Kid. I'm not sure where Ray the Kid's called from. I'm almost sure he's in Texas. He's a big time LSU Tiger fan. And I think I heard him speaking up for the Houston Astros. So I think that's where he hails from, Houston, Texas. I got Moni in the building. I got Rhonda S. from Chicago, Illinois, in the building. I have uh, my main man. Built for this own dopest DJ, I always say East of Mississippi, DJ Knox is in the building. I got Low Key, the Queen of South Central, she's in the building. And the chat room, I got my man Chris Reinhardt right here from Chicago, Illinois, he's in the building. And uh, I got my main man Vince Wright from Minnesota, originally from Chicago. We got to rep Chicago too, Vince. I know you've been living up there for a long time, but you, your roots here in Chicago. I got Courtney Harper. On Chicago in the building. Much love to Courtney Hopper. Much love to Vince Wright. Sports done right. Follow that brother. He is. you great content. Much love to Vince Wright. Thank you, Vince, for participating in the show. Uh, and, and for right now, that's all we have in the chat room. And new. How you doing, man? How was your new year, brother? Oh, it was well, man. Spent it with a good friend, wife. We uh, just sat around watching uh, comedy shows, man. Okay. What's the guy from Chicago, man? The, com- the comedian, not D-Ray, but the other brother. Corey Holcomb. It's a bunch of them, man. We got J.A. Shabazz. That's my man, Jay, from the north side of Chicago, from Lincoln Park area. Much love to my man, Jay. Thank you for the support, bro. I got DJ yeah, Chuck, yeah, a.k.a. Al West. Yes, Who was it, man? Uh... It's a bunch of what bunch of man, from Chicago, man. D Ray, no, it wasn't D Ray. Man, what's my man's name? Rhonda said D, uh, Deion Cole. Yeah, that's him. My man, that's a fun. Yeah, oh, on Netflix. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. He acted a fool, didn't he? Oh I man, I wish I could have been there live, bro. <laughs> he acted a complete fool. Shout out to Dion Cole, man. Been holding it down for the comedy scene for a bunch of years. Not big up to Dion Cole. What's up, brother? What's up? Indeed, that's what I'm going to do a lot this year, too, man. Laugh and work. Yeah, that's what time it is, man. I have we to work better than myself, man. Yeah, yes, exactly, man. Laughter is always a good thing. If you don't add anything to your life, add more laughter, you'll be a better person for it. Much love to anybody who adds anything positive to your day. Let's get on with the show, man. I'm going to start off with some news stories. And one of these stories ties into what we've been talking about for the last few weeks on the show since the show started. Now, what we're going to do is this portion of the show is going to be called, well, you know, we're going to do the news and then we're going to go right into the stay on cold. Marijuana has been legalized in the city of Chicago. We had line, they had lines longer than train smoke outside of each one of these emporiums. They were running out of marijuana. They were unable to service people in some of these instances. It was so many people that the uh, cash registers folded at one point. They were unable to uh, get people to pay. They were selling so much marijuana. But you know why yeah. I'm bringing this story up, brothers and sisters? Because there was a war on drugs instituted by the former president, Richard Nixon. And with that war on drugs, our community was hit the hardest. Our community and, and, and the Latino community. But you know what's yeah, funny? The drugs won. Exactly. Yeah, the drugs definitely won. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the crazy part, though, bro. The war on drugs is this. It locked up. As a matter of fact, just during the Bill Clinton era to today, it was more people incarcerated due to drug offenses that were brought to this country as as slaves. Most people don't even know that. More people were, yep. in, were, were brought to this country, incarcerated them, were brought to this country and forced into a ditch of servitude. That make it look. It makes it look like people who look like me and you 
are prone yep. to crime. But as I was watching, Clinton. yeah, Bill Clinton, everybody's favorite president. But as I was watching, black president. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah he first black president. Now, check this out. The crazy part is this. When I'm watching the news, brother, all I see is people who don't look like us, who don't look like they Latino. How is it that all the weed was bought up by people that don't look like me and you, but all the jail cells are held down by people that look like me and you in the Latino community? Oh, hello, hello. You already know that. Exactly. It's insane, man. Cat, just... I just don't you understand. You already know that. You know, yeah. but why, you know, the jails don't work for everybody. You know, it's just, it, it just awful strange to me, man. People who don't look like us. And really, again, it goes back to people who don't have money. Because my second story of the night, unless you want to expound on that. Do you? People who look like us while we feel, while we feel the drug the jail cell? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, for the simple fact that, you know, all, all laws are, like, I, it goes back to us not learning the Constitution. To us not knowing the Constitution from grammar school, high school, even in college. You don't know law. We're going to start off the year with this, man. Pick up them law dictionaries. Learn law, get the Constitution, get the Bill of Rights, get all that stuff and study, man. Teach it to your kids. Because that's the reason why they can build and pass laws and do everything done under a simulated legal process called the color of law. Anything simulated is like is like sort of similar or trying to be equal to. So that lets you know right there, they working off the colorable law, colorable office. Just like any office that anybody takes the oath of office, that's called a colorable office because they're not really in office. Because anytime you take that oath, you become an alien. That means you warn against the Constitution. You know what I mean? So in, 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 in that instance, teach your kids, arm yourselves, one thing I'm gonna tell you about that marijuana stuff, man. They better be careful with that THC, and it's another drug up in that marijuana, PBA, something like that. Mm-hmm. Man, they've done studies on that stuff, man. How it changes mm-hmm. people's sexuality, it turning seen, out men and women feminine and, and masculine. Yeah, I've seen things of that nature. I've definitely seen studies about. You have to, Why all of a sudden it's a big rush to legalize marijuana now? Everybody talking about, oh, it's for the economy, oh, one want the boats for that? Hmm. Didn't the boats supposed to supply that? Didn't lottery supposed to supply that? Right. That's what they, that's what they told so us. What's going what's gonna to be what's gonna be the excuse when, with the marijuana? You already know they was going to uh, sell out. It's chemically made in the, in the laboratories of the U.S. That's all it is. Where you think they're getting that weed from overseas? But they but they put all our brothers and sisters in jail, huh? For having pounds of weed. It's crazy. They, they just break they just legalized drug dealers now, man. Yeah. You a drug dealer, man. No matter how you look at it, you are a drug dealer. Because you wanna have this the uh Falsification of thinking oh, that just because somebody give you a license, now you legalize. You, you see that thought process right there, man? Right. At first, before I didn't have your license, I was a drug dealer. But now, since I have your license, I'm a legalized drug dealer. Man, get the fuck out of here. Be weary of it, man. Don't just look at numbers and the economics of uh, advancement it can do for you. You ain't gonna do shit. You ain't gonna put it back into the community. Right. You gonna take that shit. Continue to buy them European cars, houses, whatever trips. 
you ain't gonna do nothing for the black community, man. And I'm gonna use black because we all together, we brothers and sisters. I'm gonna use the word black tonight. Yeah, and, and you know what? Even if you don't even use black for the disenfranchised and the poor. For the disenfranchised right. and the poor. You ain't gonna do nothing for those people because if you were, as you stated, how is it that they could have a, a mega million or a Powerball worth a half a billion dollars, but the schools ain't improved nowhere in America from the lottery? Y'all told us in the 60s that y'all was doing away with the numbers racket and you invented the lottery yep. to put that into the schools, yet no schools. We got the worst education system on earth. Our kids are dumber. We get no information, no protection. Schools are closing like 40 going north, like, they, like they're being threatened. Y'all took this away for the purpose of what? Y'all told us this is for the school. Yeah, exactly. So the marijuana yeah, exactly. supposed to do it for the schools too. Another lie. Another lie, man. When when your gas, your taxes from your taxes when you pump your gas, those are the taxes for the roads. What you uh, doing? For the roads and and even that uh going through. The, uh, the, what's that? Damn, the process off. When you oh, go the, through the, uh, toll roads, all that we, shit is illegal. You know, we got a caller, Anu. Let me see who this is. What's your name? What you want to talk about, caller? Hello? Sound like I was in them. Hello, caller? I think it's a brother. Hello, caller? Well, finish what you were saying, that new, uh, they must be shot. Yeah, the, uh, toll road, all that stuff is illegal, man. Because the, your, your taxes that you pay from your job check goes over to England, goes to, uh, the Vatican, goes to Palestine, goes to, uh, because those are the United States. And I, I, go against anybody who try to come on here and be like, no, that's, yeah, yes it is. There's more than one United States. And then also go towards uh, the 10 square miles in Washington, D.C. called the District of Columbia. So when people be like, the United States, I'll be like, which one? When people say America, I say, which one? Because you know you got North, South, Central, and the adjoining islands. Those are Americans. Right. Ain't no European American. All Europeans supposed to have a green card. Trace back their ancestors. That's how you do that. Trace their ancestors. Their ancestors go back to uh, Ireland and England and France and all that. Those are those. They came in. They came over here as land grazers, right? As pilgrims, right? Exactly. Foreigners, right? I'm just saying. I'm just, you know. Don't take my word for nothing. Research and look up everything. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, brother. So, this so when those foreigners get in those offices, man, they speak with a fork tongue. You know what I mean? They use what's called Machiavelli, and that's not Tupac. That's a real book. They use the art of war, they use the art of warfare, and the art of deception on our people, man. So when you don't know law, you perceiving to think that you know law because you just going off with the media and what your alderman and state representative and all of them telling you. But them people speak a whole different language called legalese. So when you getting in them courtrooms, you thinking you receiving justice, you ain't receiving nothing. Because you don't know that language. You don't even supposed to be in that court. You're supposed to be in the federal district court. But don't take my word for it. Research and look it up. I'm going to say this mantra real quick too, B. Okay. I cannot give you legal advice. If you want legal advice, seek yourself a competent attorney. <laughs> if you can find one, and please be advised. My man. This stuff is, is, is this stuff is merely entertainment. Now we're good. 
All right. I want to welcome DJ Chuck. I want to welcome Patar. And uh, I think Vince Wright just came in the show. I want to thank you guys for the support My man. and the continued support. Uh, I, I saw people were dropping a... Uh, if you know your... Uh, J.A. Shabazz said, if you don't know your rights... Know your rights. How do you know when you have been denied your rights? If you don't know your rights, how do you know when you've been denied your rights? Is that a question or is that a... Hmm. Well, well, when they lock you up and then you one of them statistics. Exactly. Let me respond to him on that one. What we do, uh, uh, J.A. Shabazz, what we do is offer people the information of going to get the Black Laws Dictionary, what is it, uh, chapter, volume four? Yeah, you got Black Laws, you got Deans, you got Bouvier's, you got uh, William Campbell Black, you have, uh, shit, I got them all back here in my back seat. I'm in my car. When well, I'm on the radio, I'll be in my car. Okay. Well, those are the books that you need to obtain, James, because when you... Like you said, if you don't know your laws, I mean, you don't know the law, you don't know if you're being denied. This is why we always tell people to study. Once you study and uh, 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 arm yourself with the information, like it's a law of metaphysics. Metaphysics states that we are all comprised of energy and information. You use that energy to obtain the information to become a competent person in the United States of America. I just got another call. What's your name? What you want to talk about? Hello. Hello. Well, they say something. Yeah, yeah, they ain't gonna, they not saying anything. We're not gonna worry about it. Uh, oh, you, you got to be just into the room too. Mooka Dean is in the building. Mooka Dean is in the building. Good brother. Happy New Year. Machiavellian book is called The Prince. Oh. Jay, it looks like J.A. Shabazz was making a statement, not asking a question. Thank you for participating, J.A. We got the brother from yeah, 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 he's right. He's right. It's called the Prince. He's right. Exactly. He was making the statement. Okay. And I saw yeah, DJ I right Chuck. Here. DJ Chuck made a statement as well. Let me go back to DJ Chuck. We don't want to omit anybody. We don't, want to, we don't want anybody to feel as if we're ignoring what they're saying. No, sir. We really appreciate your uh, uh, participation, participation in the show, and we love back and forth. And again, if, as a matter of fact, let me put this in the chat room right now. This information. Hey, B, can I say something else? Go ahead. You can talk. Talk right now, bro. Hey, it's also uh, American jurisprudence. It's called Am Jur. And then you also have corporate jurisdiction, and then you also have words and phrases. Okay. There you go. That's the information you need, brothers and sisters. They don't teach that stuff in school, brothers and sisters. Okay, J.A. said that's why there is a need to once again teach the Constitution today's school system like we learned back in the 80s. And we didn't even learn it to the full extent back in the 80s, man. We nope. didn't learn it to the full extent back in the 80s. It's kind of like we've spoken on this before in the past, James. It's like the law, you know, what, you, what the test you take to obtain your driver's license. That's not the law. Those are just the rules that in which you need to uh, test that you need to obtain right. the situation. Not right. being a part of the, uh, 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 this, not knowing the laws of the road, not knowing that if you exit your vehicle, even after doing 150 miles per hour, if you legally park your car and exit your vehicle, no person in one of those blue and white cars or whatever color cars in your town can do anything to you. You can't even be written up for a citation. But they don't tell you that. Nope. Parking, none of that. If they park, if they pull up behind you, that's illegal. Because you, they have to have probable cause. Probable cause is just because you were swerving or doing something doesn't make that illegal. Yeah. Because your car is like a uh, part of your house. So that, that falls under the castle doctrine. In which, uh, just because you got a tail light out, something like that, ain't none of that illegal. 
they stopping your they stopping your motion. Anytime your motion is stopped, anytime you stop, that's why you ask, Am I being am I being detained or can I leave? Because that's a form of detainment. That's a form of arrest. That means they're uh, they're they're arresting your movement. That's all. It all ties into commerce. Everything is commerce. Just like you were saying, B, when you were saying about the rules of the road, mm-hmm. every state has their own uh their own uh their own book. On, on the rules of the road, it's a it's a thick book, not that little book they give you for drivers' ed. It's the actual like our book is ILCS six twenty five. You can look that up too. I got it in the back here too. Hold on. I give you the exact name. I know I'd be redundant when I be talking about books. No, 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 no. There's no, 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 no. You not. No, you're not, because you got people who ain't like my man J. H. Shabazz. He's a long time listener in the background. He may not have heard uh, 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 this information before, so we do have to repeat ourselves. Yeah. There were people who were yeah. unable to write things down, so we do need to repeat these yeah. things. Thank you, Mookie Dick, for putting that number in there. Much love, my brother. Here you go, B. It's called West. West is the publisher. It's called the Illinois Vehicle Code. Every state has ours is chapter 625 Illinois compiled statute. I have the 2014 edition. Okay. It supersedes the 2013 uh, panel. And these are things that we must arm ourselves with. Oh, thank you, Chuck. I was just, Chuck said he was responding to the statement of why so many brothers are locked up. Exactly. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you for always participating. Chuck, always participate. The next thing I want to Thank you, talk, brother Chuck. Exactly. Like Rhonda S. just said, brother, you're not being redundant. Again, the information is powerful, and without you being redundant, there'll be people lost in the sauce, so to speak. So, no, you are never oh, yeah. being you are never being redundant, my brother. Another thing I want to get on is this. This is why I'm having a show today on the code of our community. You know, they used to call it the black codes. They used to call, you know, a lot of people say you're talking out of code when you're speaking out of turn, you're being disrespectful, so forth and so on. A lot of people say that. But the thing that I want to uh, make, make uh, uh, obvious to people is this. When you see the story like I'm about to talk about, this is why we must type as, as brothers, and men who get up and work every day, no matter what culture you are part of, this is why you need to act, start acting right, man. Stop chasing money and, and, and start chasing community peace and growth and building your family. And then you won't have to worry about this. This is a man in the Bronx, right? Yeah. Was arrested this week for attempting to kidnap a sleeping woman on the train. Now, is it safe to sleep on a train? No, it's not. Is it advisable to sleep on the train? No, it is not. But sometimes, busting our asses at these jobs every week, we end up falling asleep. I've done it myself. Yeah, exactly. And you shouldn't be subject to abduction if you fall asleep due to a 12, 14, 16 hour work day, having children, having a family. You shouldn't be subjected to that. And that is a direct reflection on people of my gender, male, uh, the male gender, not stepping up and doing what they're supposed to do. Another story is this. There's been a cry from you know Coastal. Why? Huh? So you know why you said male gender. A man and a male is two different things. My man. My man. There's a difference between a man and a male. You are, you are 10 billion percent correct. And, and we have to start acting like men. No, 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 man. It's, it's about growth. It's about development. Oh, damn, I'd have turned into a gang meet, huh? But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 uh... Those, it, are, those, are, those are part of the principles, though. Exactly. So, we have to tighten up our ship. Another thing I want to talk about, and then we're going to go right into the stand on cold thing. 
there hasn't been a, a, a recent uh, uh, crowd swelling or uh, uh, uprising to do away with the police in the United States of America. People are starting to understand that the police were really created or, or come to the information that the police were really slave capturers. This was an organization created to capture our ancestors when they said enough. And these dudes are become race soldiers. They are exercising the brutality that they learned in the military, the racist military in the United States of America. Things of that nature. And people are starting to say, we don't need this. Dude on Fox said, well, if we do away with the, uh, 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 if we do away with the police department, the rich people will just organize and create a, a system in which they will control the country. But they already control the country. They look, and, and he also made a statement that he didn't say it, but he hinted towards being inherently disenfranchised, financially disenfranchised, makes you a criminal. But I have a degree in criminal justice, and the very first thing I was told, well, the, the first thing I was told in the class was, if you ever arrested, don't say anything to the police. The police are not your friend. This is a former police officer yep. who told me that. The second thing he told me yep. was, they asked the question, who are the biggest criminals in the United States of America? Poor people or rich people? Everybody in the class raised their hand and said poor people and said why? Drug dealer, theft, things of that nature. He said you all are wrong. He does everything rich folks do. Exactly. He said the biggest thieves in the country are rich people. He said the dude who's stealing out of Walmart, the dude who's stealing cars, the dude who's stealing... Uh, uh, embezzling from, uh, from pillar to poles, robbing people to get PayPal, he is only stealing thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, and maybe even a billion dollars if he's lucky. But Bernie Madoff was stealing from 1968 to 2008, he stole over $68 billion. So Bernie Madoff alone, alone, Bernie Madoff probably stole more money and, and works. Uh, stole stuff with more worth than anybody who's stealing on a low level who gives up and working every day. So this is why we technically you don't need the police uh, 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 to to uh, run your community. No, because they were only they were only they were only created to protect the corporations. And not infringe on man's or human or natural man's rights. But if you don't know law, you, you ain't gonna know that. Yeah, I mean, and this is why, again, we must stay on code. We must educate each other. The police were created to protect the wealthiest citizens from the poor initially. Shout out to JB, I'm J. H. The Bass. Thank you for participating in the show. I really appreciate it. Much love. Uh, And this is why we need to have these conversations because people are actually out here believing that the police are out here to save us. They are out here to do favors for us. No, they're not. This is why, again, you must get these disinformation, you must grab these books, and you must educate you, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your aunt, uncle, fathers, nieces, nephews, children, wives, and husbands because Again, if you don't have this information, you subject yourself to the tyranny of people who have done you no service whatsoever. You can think it's a black thing. You can think it's a white thing. It's a wealth versus lack of wealth thing. Point blank period. So we, we are speaking to our community, but at the end of the day, this isn't about money. This is about you don't have the, the finances and the resources to maintain in this country without this information. Again, metaphysics, information, and energy. Once you have the information, use the energy that's in your body to elevate yourself and obtain what you need, whether it be wealth or what have you. Those are the simple facts. You can ignore these facts if you like, but at the end of the day, that's how we live in this country. Now, for police and to care your own self. Exactly, exactly. This, Can I give you the law for that? Shoot, I'm listening. I'm gonna read this. It is 
is not the duty of the police to protect you. Their job is to protect the corporation and arrest old breakers. Here's, here's the law you can look up. SAP versus Tallahassee. SAP, S-A-P-P versus Tallahassee. T-A-L-L-A-H-A-S-E-E. And there's also, these are, this is actually Supreme Court case law. And there's also one called Riff versus City of Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Riff is R-E-I-F-F versus City of Philadelphia. Look those two uh, laws up. You can Google them. Okay. You need me to do that now or are you just giving that to the uh, listeners for information purposes? Uh, giving it to the listeners. Well, okay, I'll cool. you this, though. I'll shoot you this. Okay, cool. Now, uh, my man, Ray the Cavs, said, I'm busy, so late with this statement. Great statement. I tell my grandkids and kids all the time, the world is full of males, very lacking of real men. Shout out to uh, Ray the Cavs. Thank you for having your ears on. Thank you for the support at all times. Thank you. He's right. He's right. You know, yeah. we're just walking around, standing up and peeing at this point. We're not acting like real men. We're not taking... You know, anytime you can walk down the street and look at a kid do something wrong and say, that ain't my kid, you wrong. Uh, or, you know, this is my favorite excuse. These kids crazy. They'll hurt you. Man, I talk to gangbangers and thugs all day, every day. They ain't never disrespected me. What it is is you want to talk down to them. And ain't nobody right. allowing you to disrespect them. No human being worth a damn is going to let you disrespect them. So if you come at them like a human being, act like you give a damn, they will respond like they talking to an adult. A lot of our people in our age group are older, think they have some right to scold another young adult or a kid, and that's why they get that negative response. Point blank, period. You talk to these kids like yep. they're human beings, and they will respond to you accurately. Yeah, that's what I do with the little brothers in the community. I uh, teach them laws. I'll be like, hey, come here, little brother. If you're going to be out here, you need to know how to protect yourself. Right. Yeah, I do that. Yes, I do that. Yeah. They but be out not- there on the corner. I teach them, hey, man, just because they pull up on you, that's not no... Uh, that's not no cold violation because you and your guys hanging out on the corner. Exactly. That that law was only created for us. Exactly. Uh, mob action. What they and what they call it? Mob action. Mob what, action. But what the uh? But what the white folks? What they call it? Be loitering. Remember? The, remember what? Remember that show that used to come on TV called Entourage? Yeah. Oh yeah. They call they call theirs Entourage when a when a group of uh, so called white folks together. Oh, they man, call I, yours mob action. Mob action, exactly. Ready Care said exactly age right. You can never tell anyone to state uh the state of the community if you're not hands on trying to fix it. Shout out to Ready Care, thank you for participating again. Please continue to participate everybody. We love the dance and we love the back and forth. Agree. Agree, disagree, or just want to add what we add what you think to the conversation. It is all welcome. We are not above anybody in the chat room or anybody Nobody. listening. If you wanna if you are listening and you wanna just call in 605-313-4370. The access code is 920-920-547. Thank you for participating this in the chat room. If you feel like you want to add something, you agree, disagree. It's not about us being right, and that's part of what I'm going to talk about. Now, uh, brown people, Phil Jackson's called. Phil, uh, brown, brown people, Phil Jackson called. Uh, you left off a word, J.A. Privilege is what Chris said. Exactly. It's, it's a privilege to to have the police on your... Uh, oh, yeah, LBJ called his people a posse. Exactly. A posse is a band of... Uh, uh, people think a posse is a band of legal people. A posse is a band of criminals. People don't understand that. A posse is a band of criminals. So, and Phil Jackson put that in his book and everybody acted as if LeBron James is overreacting. No, you disrespected the man. You said the man was going to need mental health at this point in his life. And look at him now. Shout out to LeBron James. For being the man that he is and doing what he can do at any time to help his community, big up. Now, 
I want to get into the meat of the conversation right here, and no, it's the code. You know, we we must establish and adhere to a specific code in our community. The first code I want to address, first thing in this code I want to address is this. We must, as a community, and please correct me if you think I'm wrong or step in anytime you're ready. We got to stop allowing other people to fill our heads with this nonsensical foolishness. Like, this, this is one of the things I hate the most. We watch the television. And then we regurgitate things that we hear on the television as if they are God-fearing facts. I want to I want to read to the people in the chat room a fact about the city that me and the brother Anu live in, and a few people in the chat room live in that you don't know that you're going to be shocked when you hear it. Today marks. The third consecutive year of record reduction in gun violence in the city of Chicago. Gun violence in the city of Chicago is down 13% from last year. But I guarantee you, anybody in this chat room, anybody listening, if you say Chicago, Illinois, the first thing that comes to your mind is gun violence. And when you think gun violence, you think people like that look like us are committing these atrocities. And that's because you allow people who don't like you to tell you what's going on in your community. For those who don't know, I'm not just going to tell y'all about my city. Gang violence and gun violence is at its lowest since 1968 in what city in America? Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. So you got people like this dude uh, uh, I was listening to today. He from the Kitchen Crips. You got this dude James McDonald from uh, former Pyro. And you got another brother. I can't think of his name right now. Oh, Big U, who's from uh, 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 the Rolling 60 Crips. They are all working together. The brother from the Kitchen Crips got together with, with some of the uh, uh, essay gangs. And uh, 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 Latino games, I don't, don't know if essay is a uh, disrespectful thing for our any other Latino folks to listen. And they have created a piece between the Florence and the Kitchen Crips and another set of Crips. And I was talking to another good friend of mine, and she was saying that it's other sections that's trying to get together as well. These brothers yeah. who helped create this ugly truth about the city of Chicago and the city of Los Angeles. And this this dude, I can't think his name, he, he, he's one of the Latin Kings, the biggest Latin King gang in New York. They are all working together to reverse this. So when they tell you that the Crips and the Bloods are worth nothing, when they tell you the Gangster Disciples and the Vice Lords are worth nothing and the Black Stars and these people are worth nothing, that's just further information to poison your mind against people who look like you and I because we should be friends. The sister Low Key, who's in the chat room right now, hands out food every holiday. She handed out 1,200 plates over the Thanksgiving holiday, and you don't hear anything about that. Yep. But, you, it, but if somebody gets shot in that neighborhood, it's going down. You're going to hear that? You're going to hear about yep. that in Chicago. Yep. So, that's yep. the first code I want to address. You got anything that's found on, on that, Brother Andrew? Yeah, that's that's the code of uh, not harming each other. Right. No harm shall come to no so-called black Hispanic within the community. Somebody look like you, don't bring no harm to them, or we're gonna come check check you. Exactly. Uh, I can't think of the brother's name. I'm looking for his name right now, but I can't think of the brother's name. It's got to the point where this brother. Uh, uh, I'm looking for his name right now. Uh, uh, his brother has literally got together with his Florences. That's the name of the gang that they've been warned with. He got together uh -huh. with the Florences. And uh, uh, his name is uh, Porky Smoke and EC69. They got together with the Florences. And, uh, 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 and they, he said... That they, in LA, they write your set and cross it out on the wall. That's a form of gangbanging. So if you're part of the Florences and you 
flip somebody's name on the wall. Oh yeah, we also have baseball teams with other gang, uh, other crib gangs, and, uh, and we do it. Uh, we do a round table. See, that's what I'm talking about. Sisters like low key. If you want to call in low key, feel free. Please call in and share with us and educate our brothers and sisters on what's going on in your city, so they won't assume that all of us are animals. If you feel like it, share. If not, but he said that these brothers and sisters. Got, then it got to the point where if you write somebody's name upside down on the wall and they catch you, they whooping your ass. He said they did. Yes. But one dude got his ass whooped by four sets of Crips for doing it. And the Florences are doing the same thing because the dude, here's the good thing. There's a shot caller behind the wall who's behind this from the Florences and he's encouraging EC69 and uh, for the 6ix9ine Crips, for Porky and Smoke to don't give up because he working on his end and they working on their end. So this yeah. is part of the code that we talking about. We must work together and protect each other. I got the sister low key on the phone. Talk to me, sister. Hey, baby, how you doing? Happy New Year, sis. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I knew you were doing a good job. I appreciate free information you're giving me. Um, Thank you, sir. Uh huh. Getting back to this cold of the street and all this information in regards to um, this table that he is doing, I'm active in my neighborhood, still out there in my neighborhood doing what we do, but I also do, you know, for the homeless. We give out 400 food bags every first and third Friday, we feed every other Saturday. And we have a, a meeting for our homegirls every third Sunday. Try to, you know, educate them on how to get them off the street. How to tell them, to, you know, go back to school. You know what I'm saying? There's no need for you to be on the streets doing what you're doing. And get out and, and just do something and experience something else. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it, it, L.A. is... L.A. is not so different than any other neighborhood. I mean, any other city. But we all we always have our own we also have our own code in the other city does. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 a that goes on behind behind the stories, behind the stories, behind the stories that never in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful, sis. Yeah. Because, see, we don't hear about the low keys. We don't hear about the homie from the uh, uh, the kitchen crips and the six nine crips and big U from the uh, uh, what 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 is he uh, 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 rolling six. We don't hear about them yeah. brothers. We we just hear yeah. about the killing and dismay. You don't hear about the sister here on the west side of Chicago who writes, who has literally created a vacant lot and put everybody who's been murdered name on the rock and you got people out west marching i got people who are not no longer living in chicago calling me saying they ain't doing nothing on on the west side of chicago this sister's doing things on the west side of chicago she got former nba stars like mark aguari and these people supporting her in this mission so it is people out here busting their ass every day father flagler on the south side uh the gangs formerly known as the black peach stone rangers the l ruffins they doing good things in the community this is one of the most yeah. they, they were labeled the most one of the most notorious gangs in the country but they out here doing community service work so yeah we, we need you and other people to come on if, if you want to invite somebody else to come on we'd love to have them on too we need everybody listening everybody participate at all times so this information can be disseminated to the public I, we are not I, I grew up under the I grew up underneath Tricky Williams and okay. Raymond Washington, the starters of all of it. I grew up underneath them. So when back then it was just crippling all the time. So it's good to see that you know we coming to this round table and and they trying to get a baseball game started or trying to get other uh, neighborhoods um, to come in to like say put down put down your weapons because we got grandkids and kids that looking at us right about now and we're not doing nothing but just burying burying our own let's come That's together right. let's come together like we do when we got to go to this prison because when you go to this prison it's level four it's level three it's level two you gotta you guys gotta come together then 
So why not just come together right now? On exactly. the street and just lock it down and have all these, you know, have these, 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 these um, the uh, police scared to come to the neighborhood. Let's police our own neighborhood. Let's get back to doing that. How we yep. used to do back in the neighborhood. Let's go back to that. Let's teach our own. Let's feed our own. So that's what my neighborhood is doing right now. We patrol our own perimeter. Our own perimeter. So we patrol our own shit. So the police yep. come, but they don't come. You see them, but they, you want to see them. You know what I'm saying? They come yep. in and they come they come in and they go out. Because they know we got we got this. From whatever area that we in, we got this. You guys don't need to show up. At all. So, it, you know, right, we, got base, we got baseball games with eight other eight other crip, um, sets from different neighborhoods of the, um, from L.A. And we're trying to get more. We're trying to get more because we're we trying to build it. We're trying to get all this good energy that we have. You know, most of, most of the homies, they got um, uh, a good sportsman. They don't play ball, they don't play baseball, they don't play football. They just got in and took, they just fell into gang banging and just lost all thoughts of what, what what could happen, what could have happened if they thoughts wasn't just or just hanging out in the street. You know what I'm saying? So now they, you know, just sitting back in the rooms of just going on and hanging out and just playing ball and having a good time. You know, yeah, he's just... We trying to do, we, yeah. We trying, we trying to get back to where we used to be. It, it, it's, it's taking a minute, but it's gonna all fall together. It's all gonna fall together. And I, 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 I wish I could just show video of what we do. I'm listening. I'm gonna keep talking, low key. Keep talking. I wish I could show video on what we do in our neighborhood, but you know, some folks don't want to be on video. You know what I'm saying? Because for whatever reason. But uh, we're out there. We're out there. We're doing ours. And the, the homies that we different sets, we all pull together and band together and get it all done. But you know so, what? All we got to do is talk about it. They don't have to be on video because if we spread the good news like people spread the bad news, then we ain't gonna have mm-hmm. no problem. See, that's our problem, mm-hmm. in my opinion. It's easy to talk about, you know, low key over there doing such and such. H- low key and H rap robbed the bank last week. They did this and they did that, and that was that hit mm-hmm. every that hit Watts, South Central, Los Angeles, Chicago, Atlanta, New Jersey, Watts, state of Washington, Texas. It hit the whole community. But handing out food, we got to come on the show like this and talk about it. So what we're going to do is continue to build our community here. So when next time you come on and you need some support, like a GoFundMe or a Cash App or something to help y'all feed these people, then you can come on here and announce it. We can tweet it out and then we can continue to make this thing grow. Because we are, again, I'm going to say it, every chance I get, we're not animals. We are not predisposed to criminals, criminality. We are not what people say we are on TV. We are just just as good or better than anybody that walks the face of the earth. And that's just the simple fact. That's just the honest to God truth. That's right. That's right. We are. We are. We are. We're just trying to help that's out. Beautiful. The best way we can, we're just trying to help out. We didn't ask, you know, if you want to give us some money, okay, cool, I'll take it. Because the shit is coming out of my pocket, I'll take it. But, you know, it's coming out from the goodness of my heart. You know what I'm saying? So I know I'm going to get that reward later. So mm-hmm. I'm good, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help out as much as I can. As much as I can. Exactly, exactly. Man. Good and, and you know what? Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Thank you for uh, sharing with us, Low Key. It's always good. Thank you for the support of the show. And if you got anything else to say, let me know. And if you don't, we're going to move on with the show. Thank you for calling in. We love you. And thank you for helping uh, the young people. In your community and inspire people to do it throughout the United States of America and America right. and throughout the world. Much love, low key. All right, let me go. And again, well, man, this is the code that we talking about. 
this is exactly what we are talking about when we talk about these codes and what you have to do and what what's necessary because if we don't do what's necessary all this the government ain't helping us the government ain't doing this and it, enough for that it, 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 later for that it, it ain't the government job to fix us it's our job to fix us point blank right, man. and we got to stop allowing that tv to destroy the minds of ourselves because you looking at each other crazy, assuming that we ain't right naturally when it's a condition. Like, like people always say, it's the crab in the barrel syndrome. Crabs in the barrel are acting normal. You don't see crabs. If, when you watch them exploration shows of the ocean and they show the animals in the ocean, you don't see them attacking each other. They're just walking around the ocean. But if you put somebody in an intense situation, you're going to get intense response. And that's why crabs in the barrel try to kill each other. They trying to supply. Now yep. we need to we need to we need to move as a unit. What's those it, African ants? Yeah. Move as a unit? Exactly. Some army ants. That's right, brother. One attack you, you guarantee the million coming for you. Exactly. Uh Rhonda said that's a beautiful gift. That you and your people are giving to your community. Shout out to uh, Rhonda. Thank you for participating. Shout out to Low Key one more time, man. We got to show love to people who are doing the right thing. And we got to acknowledge people doing the right thing. They don't, they're not doing it for a pat on the back, but it sure feel good when you do something right and somebody pat you on your back. Yes, sir. Now, something I don't know how anybody else feel about this, and you can do disagree, agree, or just give us a call and let me know how you feel. This is something that bothers me. Stop putting expectations on people. And, and when I say stop putting expectations on people, uh, uh, what I mean by that is this. We, you can't expect and knew to do what H-Rap do. H-Rap can't expect the, the greatest to do what he do. You can only be expected to do what you are capable of doing. And I think when we say, oh, you need to do this and you need to do this, all I ask is do your best or whatever you can do. And I think that's one of the greatest hindrances to our community. We don't allow people to be them. Oh, well, you can do better. Well, maybe you you know, maybe this is a 70-30 situation. You can do 70% of the work and they can only do 30, but they killing that 30. Yeah. And when we put these undue expectations on people, I think it's disrespectful and unnecessary. Just move on. You know, I just don't think it's fair to those people. I don't think it's respectful to respectful to people. I just I think we need to relax on that because you don't know what I am capable of. So when you say you need to be carrying the weight of a house. No, I can only carry a brick. But if you carrying the hell out of that one brick and you doing laps with that brick, hey man, do have. If you can carry one brick at a time, carry one brick at a time. Don't be trying to carry a half a brick. But if you saying this, set, set me lofty expectations. This is why people don't want to help out, in my opinion. What you think about that, bro? Yeah, our people's expectations are different. You know what I mean? Right. Because I don't know. I don't know what you are capable of doing. But if you tell me what you're gonna do, I'm expecting for you to do it. Right. So that means you can only do by what you tell me. So my means for you are not to go beyond that. But I know that you can push yourself to do more. But hey, if that's if that's if that's what's all expected of you, then. I can't be mad at you. Right. I you can't know. be mad at you. Right, because you can only, like you said, and then people always writing folks off. God don't make no blanks, man. It ain't nobody on earth that's walking around earth every day that can't do anything. And if you want to participate again, the number seven, uh, excuse me, number 605-313. 4370. The access code is 920547. You want to participate in the conversation? Yep. 
conversation, we'll be more than glad to listen to what you have to say. And, and, and you can add or, or just add to the conversation or disagree if that's what you want to do. It's, it's not about us. It's about sharing this information and making sure our community is on point. Now, uh, another thing, this backbiting and backstabbing. See, here's the thing. If you're spiritual, if you're religious, both of those, all those holy books talk about backbiting and backstabbing. Our community has an issue with this whole, I don't like you, so I have to do you in thing. Or, you have more than me, so I'm going to do you in. This is information. This, these are these are behaviors, excuse me. These are behaviors that were born and bred into us. With things like Meritos Manumission, and it shows you that, it tells you that if you are, uh, if you tell on slave revolt, if you save a slave master's life, if you make life easier for a slave, I mean, uh, a, a slave owner, you can get your freedom. These things are passed down genetically, and we have to break the cycle. Just like if your family has a history of teenage pregnancy, high school dropout, drug addiction, at some point you must break the cycle. So this backstabbing has to be something that we do away with in our community as well. We have to. In order to survive, we're going to have to get along. You don't have, to, you know what? We don't have to respect each other. You don't have to get along. Just respect it, because it's cool if you don't like Ace Rap. It's cool if you don't like Anu. But just show him the respect that you will show your uh, 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 your grandmother, your grandfather, or whoever you respect in your life. I want to welcome Rhonda to the chat room. Thank you for supporting us, Rhonda. Now, what were you saying, uh, Anu? Just I piggybacking on what you were saying. Oh, oh, okay. Right oh, okay. I thought yeah. you had something else to say. Just piggyback. Yeah, man, because that, that thing, man, that thing is really destroying us. People think, oh, man, I'm working with you. I got to like you. Look, when you are in a disenfranchised community, you don't have the privilege to uh, uh, like and dislike who you're working with. Oh, I ain't going to that restaurant. Cause and new on it, and I don't like him, and I ain't gonna make him rich. But you're gonna go down the street and get the people who can't stand your ass, your money. You and new had a disagreement, so and new needs to starve. But the people who legitimately don't like you, you down the block, pouring money into their pockets. Help me understand that, people. please. Please, somebody help me understand that. <laughs> Because, and again, if you agree, disagree, or just want to add something to the conversation, 605-313-4370 with an access code of 920547. Big Illinois in the building. Thank you. Thank you for the support, Big Illinois. Big Brother Illinois. Hello, brother. Yeah, man, it's just the backstabbing has to stop. What, what is it that you are trying to prove by stabbing folks in the back? What is it that you're trying to accomplish by doing that? Because all you're doing is setting the community back a million and one times. You setting us back a million and one times. Every time you are, oh, well, let me let me get, let me do him in. Let me do this and do that. You ain't helping nobody. And what's your purpose if you ain't trying to help? I really don't understand. Right. What's your exactly? Be what's your motive? There's no motive behind the means. Right, you just acting. You you acting like an animal at that point. This point, you are really having animalistic behavior. The, another thing, the gossiping. We got to do away with the gossiping as well. The gossiping is a it, is an agent of the backstab. Like why why? Are we repeating things about Brother Anu? Or will you know Brother Anu slapped his wife last night? Were you there? No, I heard it. We got to cut that shit out. And you're blocking your own blessings by intentionally hurting someone else. Shout out to Rhonda. S, thank you for 
participating. Thank you for always going uh, uh add to the conversation. Hey, that's something else we gotta cut out, man. With the nonsensical gossiping and spreading negative energy. You know what? Look, if you guys disagree, if anybody listening disagree with what I'm saying, or you have any pushback, I want you to think about this. Most people in the country, well, outwardly, most people don't like Donald Trump. Outwardly, most people say he's misogynistic. He's a racist. He's a, a, a what, 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 xenophobic. He's every kind of uh, ism or phobic that, that you can get out there. But you know what? You know the difference in rich people and people who get up and go to work every day, working class or poor people? Rich people stay on cold. Donald Trump says, grab them by the dime. You know, grab them by the vagina. Uh, well, you know, he was just playing. Donald Trump says, shithole countries. Uh, well, he didn't mean that. They all stay lockstep with this dude. No matter how racist he is, no matter how much, some of them might even disagree. But seeing how we are all part of the same clan, I'm standing by my man, and we'll discuss this in private. But, yep. but you see... This, and I hate I, I always I hate to bury this dude and when I say his name people gonna, not gonna believe I hate to bury him. but when you look at the Jason Whitlocks and the Stephen A. Smiths of the world talking about these young athletes what do they do I'm just gonna tell the truth what the hell is the point in telling the truth now why you always got to tell the truth ain't nobody on the other side telling the truth so well, you know that's the yellow journalism Exactly. That's that yellow journalism to appease to the people to get more viewers. So they need that rhetoric. Exactly. Like the brother Batal just said, their purpose is to continue this unity. Self-hate is rapid is rampant among us, amongst our people. Exactly. And this whole get down about you feeling necessary to just be forthright and truthful and spread gossip, distrust, disrespect about your community it's easy to just get on the phone and say look here bro now don't get me wrong i'm not telling anybody to support flat out raw butt naked foolishness i'm not saying that but you don't have to get on tv and say you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong now if we talking about an athletic event cool if we talking about this cool we talking about something entertainment wise cool you suck as an artist you suck as an actor. You suck as a comedian. That's cool. But when we start delving into these young men and women's personal lives and talking about what they should or shouldn't do, that's what we're going wrong. Because you know what? I don't hear nobody on the other side of Al doing that. I don't hear anybody from any other community being forthright and honest about what's going on. You know, like, we hate R. Kelly and Michael Jack, allegedly Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby. People lock their ass up. But you haven't heard one person on the other side of the aisle say, lock Woody Allen up. And, and it looks like he he is currently either dating or married to a young person who he adopted. Don't tell me he waited to that young lady. I, I find it difficult to believe that he waited to that young that he, this young woman got to be an adult before he uh, 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 made any sexual advances to her. Locker room talk. That's what Trump said. Exactly. Locker room talk. Grab by the wall. Exactly. The talk. Exactly. But we, as a community, we don't have no problem jumping our ass in front of the train going, to hell with Patar. To hell with that new. He's wrong. Look. Uh, to quote the great man, Louis Farrakhan, this is our nation. And we gonna handle things in our nation the way things, the way nations handle things. I don't want to get into why he said that because then that's a whole other rabbit hole that we don't want to go down. I'm not gonna go down, but that's the way we need to be doing it in our community. That's exactly the way hey, we you need know, to be doing it. Huh? What's that? What's that, brother? You no, know the good book says right. What's that? Speak on it. He who is without sin has the first stone. Amen. Amen to that. But 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 we don't do that. 
It's all about, hey, you know what it seems like to be in our community? Well, they ain't paying attention to me, so I might as well kick and no in the ass. Because if I keep kicking and no in the ass, they ain't never going to talk about what's wrong with me. Now, everybody get a turn. Everybody gets a turn. It's just Every- you ain't got your nigga wake up call yet. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> everybody get a shot. <laughs> You know, everybody gets shot. Even the brother Bill Cosby, man. The, you know, initially I was out in, in my head saying, "Man, screw, buddy, man, and all that not Because I'm part of, I'm second world. What I call second generation hip hop. First generation was in the '70s to about '81 to the Sugar Hill Gang. Sugar Hill Gang on to like uh, 1990. That's second generation in my thing. So when he started talking about the hip hop community, he, I felt like he was talking about me personally. So I'm like, man, screw Bill Cosby. I wasn't saying it out loud, but I was saying it to myself. And just when you start trying to gain some momentum on Bill Cosby and this whole situation, him being framed or whatever, whatever, he comes out. I was framed. I'm like, and you going, yeah, Bill, I'm with you. And then he, and these motherfuckers and these projects again. Hey, bro. That ain't helping your case, none. You ain't got to kick H rap in the ass to make sure to make people understand that you feel like you you uh uh that you been wrong. You ain't got to kick me, bruh. You ain't got to kick everybody in the project. Uh I got my man RC from Duluth, Minnesota. Thank you, RC, for uh, uh supporting the show. But yeah, you ain't got to kick us in our ass to uh DJ Delightful, thank you for uh joining the show. Lady J is in the building. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, you don't have to kick anybody in the ass to prove your point. Getting kicked in your ass does you does the, the other person no good. How did that help your call? Oh, uh, well, you know what? H drop ass is uh, hurting. I'm still in this cell though. No, nah, man. Enough. We don't need to invite nobody else to these dread, uh, jail cells. We don't need to invite anybody else to this pain and anguish. What we need to be doing is uplifting each other and pulling us each other up out of this thing. Otherwise, yep. you're doing exactly what the people who hate you designed you to do. Again, it's time to break the cycle. It's time to break the cycle. And, w- and what I mean, it, 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 we just have to do it, you know. Another, the, the third thing that I want to address, or the fourth, I don't know which one I'm on long yet, but right now. If you gotta, we got to stop just being angry with people and keep it in ourselves. Being angry at if the bro, if H rap is mad at that new, and I just look at you, ooh, I hate you, I hate you. Every time I see you, I hear your voice on the show. That don't do you or me no good because it might be an opportunity. For two people to come together and fix something and fix a whole a line of things. Because that does neither one of us any good to be mad at each other for nothing. Address the issues that you have with your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your friends, your neighbors, or what have you, your children, what have you. You have to address these things. I, I told y'all last week. I'm not a very forgiving dude. I, and, and it's documented that I can hold a grudge like the sun can shine. It's just who I am. I'm working on it. But there's nobody in this universe that can say I've never bought it to their face. And in order to start the healing, we got to start saying, and new, let me holler at you, man. You did this to me and I ain't like it. And he could potentially offer an explanation on why he did whatever he did. And again, it's not about being friends and kumbaya, y'all. That's not what it's about. We're not trying to. We're not out here trying to kumbaya. That's not what we out here doing. That's that's a that's a fantasy that we gonna live in a community where every all the kids gonna dance around, hold hands, and dance around in a circle, and everybody gonna like the next person. That universe does not exist. If you think that's gonna happen, you crazy in retrospect. I'm just letting you know that right now. It's not gonna happen. The whole community will never be lock, stock, and barrel, holding hands and happy together. But again, it goes back to the respect thing, brother. 
you need to have some form of respect for everybody in your community. Uh, the sister uh, Rhonda said, sometimes that's hard, H-Rap. You have to find the words and pray on those words, and you can be here. You're right, Rhonda. I don't think it's possible. Hey, I'm the master of the grudge. Again, I'm as good as holding the grudge as my, my, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, and Michael Jordan was at what they did. But we must, what I would say, and I'm saying this to myself, I'm saying this to myself so everybody else can hear it. We must, I, to hear with we, I must learn to humble myself, Ron. You know, you've known me as long as anybody in the chat room, you're a big P, a big Illinois. Y'all know me as well or as long as anybody in this uh, chat room, anybody that's probably going to listen to this. Humbling yourself hurts. But I've never heard anything worth doing that didn't cause you some discomfort. If you are too comfortable in any situation, you cannot be successful. Because Michael Judd was uncomfortable. He thought Charles Barkley, he thought Patrick Ewing, he thought Carl Malone and the rest of those dudes were going to walk him down. He was never comfortable. But some of those dudes in the league, I'm not going to say no name because I don't know them. But you can clearly see that some people are happy getting their name said on the sports center every night. They have to get sneaker commercials and, and, and Gatorade commercials and things of that nature. So if you get comfortable, Rhonda, and I'm not going to lie, Rhonda, and anybody who's listening, I have been comfortable with fuck him. I'm extremely com- comfortable with man, fuck him. And, and go on, I'm going to go to Anu Crib. I'm going to go pick up Big Illinois. We're going to go to Anu Crib. We're going to send this back, y'all. It's more cover stogies, and I'm not gonna think about it no more. So I have to learn to humble myself, and I urge the people in our community to follow suit with me. Humble yourself. Learn how to let things ride. Again, I'm not asking you to go to these people's house and party and play cards and bring drinks and and, and, and and let them date your sister and all that or your brother and all that. I'm just saying it's cool to just be like. I'm cool with you. You cool over there. I'm cool over here, but I ain't got time to be hating. Because hating somebody as you live in this universe every day is like drinking poison waiting on somebody else to die. It gets like the views or whatever. Or whatever. Uh, it get it get it gets like it gets views or whatever. They want the immediate ego gratification. No one thinks about the community in the moment without thinking of the long-term effect on what it uh, what it uh, of, of it it tears down the community exactly this backbiting this gossiping this hating for no reason at all this jealousy you are right lauren it does it is a yep. long-term effect that happens with that because uh i know of a situation where as a dude was mad at his sister and he had to tell his son, no, 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 no. You and her have a situation that is separate from mine. And I respect him for doing that. Y'all keep that up. I don't mess with my sister. And if that's the case, I respect that. You know, I ain't going to say no name, but I'm, I'm, I respect the brother who did that. Because he could have very well said, yeah, hate up, motherfucker. Man. And then it's over. Now you got two generations of foolishness. Now yo, you don't want to hang out with your first cousin because your your dad and your and his sister got an issue. The kids ain't got nothing to do with this. Uh, 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 so learn how to deal with the situation or the person. I don't have to again. I don't have to like Anu. I do have to respect him as a human being. And if I start not respecting him as a human being, that's why our community is in the shape that it's in. That's very true. Uh, that's very few and we have to be willing to stand on the truth and admit our part in the wrongdoing whatever it may be exactly thank you Rhonda thank you Rhonda and exactly. Norm for participating exactly. in the show I'm a mayor I see you said I'm with you uh, for giving and reaching out to friends and family members who haven't talked to in a while I uh, lost an older brother last month rest in peace and condolences to you RC I hadn't talked to in years and with that said I will disassociate I, I disassociate with associates who have focus on negativity and BS thank you RC thank you for sharing rest in peace to your brother and thank you and condolences to you and your family yes condolences 
exactly, man, because, hey, man, I'm going to tell y'all something else. Uh, Patah said something about Leo's, and the funny thing is, me, Patah, and and new are Leo's. We Leo's don't hold yep. back. Once we know how you feel, uh, how you feel, of, uh, how, unless we know you're full of shit. Yeah, yeah. Once, once, once I detect the, once the bullshit me to go off, I'm like, oh yeah, kick rocks and flip flops, homeboy. I'm gonna need you to step. But uh, yeah, man. We, again, I am forced to learn how to humble myself because I'm telling you, dog, it, it's just it's an ugly situation for me. Once I feel that you cross me, I'm done with you, and I need to just be like, okay. Again, that goes back to the expectation thing. Why am I putting you up? Why am I putting that undue pressure on you to live up to what H Rap thinks you need to live up to? You need to just be an <laughs> honest person, a forthright person, and move forward from there. I can't expect you to be rap. I can't expect you to be Andrew. I can't expect you to be Joe Houston. It just don't work that way. Another thing. It goes right into this thing that I just got through talking about is this. Enough with the recruitment of the hate. If I got a problem with Lauren, if I got a problem with Lisa Dukes or DJ Chuck, I don't need to be like, and new, we ain't fucking with them no more. No, bro, that's your fight. We have to stop either even becoming susceptible to recruiting of hate or we have to stop hating. It, you know, we're not going to stop hating. I, I don't live in no imaginary world. But we got to stop recruiting people to be mad at people. Why are you going around dead, man? And new from the show, I don't like Buddy, man. I don't like Buddy. Don't like him with me. Man, go ahead on with that bullshit, man. Because, <laughs> because it is a great chance that you are mad at him over something very minor in the grand scheme of things. But one thing I noticed, people in our community, now I'm not guilty of this. I don't like him. We ain't messing with, no, you ain't messing with him. That's the fight that you and him need to have. Or just, that's a conversation that you and him need to have. Don't recruit me on that. Yeah. Because that's we. How, again, how is it that we are in the most disenfranchised community in the world, but you going to take time out your day to hate somebody? Bro, you 30 cents away from a quarter, and you hating somebody. Don't you got some other shit to be doing, bro? <laughs> like, like, you know what? Everybody want to blame it on social media. Social media got these people crazy. No, social media just show you how stupid some of the people that's around you are. That's all it is. Exactly. You know, so people were crazy way before social media. Oh man! So you mean to tell me in 2004 that was the first day of crazy in America? Hell no! I don't like him. Why you care? Why you care? That's all you have to ask somebody. I don't like Buddy. Why? Why you care? If you, why do I care if you don't like? Him? Don't over there and hate by yourself, man. Because you know why people recruit? Because hate is hate requires energy. Anger requires energy. And you can only be mad at somebody for real for so long. You without their return energy to you. If you just all you do is pick a fight with somebody who don't give a damn about you. Start arguing with them. And they gonna look at you like, man, go ahead on and keep walking, and then you gonna be standing there breathing hard, not, uh, and unless you are on hand, unless you have some type of chemical imbalance, yo, you are not gonna be mad long. Now, if you crazy, you gonna be mad all day. But if you are a reasonable person, you gonna be mad for about 10, 11 minutes. Because when that person <laughs> leaves you alone. You're going to scan them, you'll be breathing hard, and then you're going to get tired. And then it's like, I don't even know why I'm mad. Half the people that you're mad at in this world, you probably don't even know why you're mad at them, for real. Now, if they've done something egregious to you, then that's different. But 
Now, it's just Ice Cube had on one of his albums. He said, hey, man, let's go whoop, buddy. And he said, why? I don't like it. He said, what'd he do to you? I just don't like the dude. What? And we got 25, we got 35, 45, 55, 65 year old people in this community doing that. Thank you, Sabrina, for the support. Really appreciate the love. And again, here go the number. If you want to participate, if you got anything to add to the conversation, number 605. 313-4370. This is Built for This Network. This is Brothers Gonna Work It Out. But yeah, man, it's just, look, people, we, we have to stop. Don't even fuel that energy. Exactly. Thank you, Loki. You cannot fuel that energy. That That's something I'm telling you. You can even try it with your significant other. If your significant other is an argumentative person, stop arguing with them. And watch what happens. Yeah. There's the, oh, 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 it's, you run out of gas. You need that energy yeah. back yeah. at you. <laughs> I will go ahead and speak on that, no? Yeah, they'd be like, you ignoring me. Hey, like my man R. Kelly said, hey, B, what you do don't make, what you eat don't make me shit. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. <laughs> You have to cut that negative energy. We always promoting just mad foolishness in this community, man. And I'm not trying to beat us up. These are things that I've noticed. And if you've noticed anything, 605-313-4370 at code 920-547. If you've noticed anything, add it to it. If you want to call me out, do so. But, hey, man, I ain't got nothing to hide. That they're recruiting of haters. Just hate on your own, man. Because I'm telling you, people cannot hate you all by they by, all by themselves. It you couldn't have the Ku Klux Klan one dude. He can't be one dude. He cannot be one. Cause hey, unless you again, if you're unhinged, if you are sick mentally, then yeah, you might be able to pull it off. You might be able to hate. Eight, 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 eight. But if you are a normal, sensible human being, there is no way on God's green earth that you could walk around this country hate, walk around the world hate. You just can't do it. And that goes, yep, that goes back to that male versus male. It's the difference between a man and a male. Exactly. And there's also a difference between. A woman and a female. Exactly. I don't. I don't know if I even should be addressing this topic right here because this one that you brought that up. That was my next thing. Early in the conversation, we talked about males versus men, and now we're gonna talk about females versus women. I don't know what's going on in the woman community. I can't speak about it. I'm not a woman. Never wanted to be one. I don't identify as one. Or none of that stuff that they talk about on the team. Okay. I'm a man, testosterone drip. But I don't please any of the ladies in the chat room. 605 313 4370. The access code is 920 547. Please help me understand this angst that's in the 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 uh, the, 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 the genders, uh, uh, community, so to speak. What is it that makes brings about this angst with women. I always assume this. Again, I'm open for I'm open for the smoke. I don't know. Why is it that it seems that is it because in the man world, if I get too slick at the mouth of Anu, me and Anu gonna be rolled around in the streets and it's gonna be it's gonna be an activity of physicality and y'all don't really participate in that. But it seems like the sisters can't get along. At what point did the sisters start rolling around in the streets fighting? I get it. It's entertaining. Ha, ha, ha. You see her breasts out in the middle of the fight. Ha, ha, ha. I was 14 before, too. But it seems like the sisters is on these videos more than these brothers. Fighting and cussing and acting a fool in these streets, man. Can any of the sisters help me understand what's going on? Like... All my, a lot, I ain't gonna say all, because it's not cool to say all. A lot of my women friends 
this is the you bring up something to them and the first thing out their mouth is I don't mess with women. Because any of the sisters call me 605-313-4370 access code 9205 what's up? What's going on with y'all with the sisters? Because I know some sisters be get handing out uh, compliments and things like that. But a lot of the sisters is like, I don't mess with women. Women full of shit. And it's like, where, how did that start? It's for attention? Wow. Well, man, I don't even know how to address that one. What about you, man? Have you noticed that? Yeah, I've noticed it. All, but I also noticed how the sisters are the main uh, number. Uh, the numbers are rising, entering the jails also. Hey, thank you. To due to, to a lack of due to a lack of their uh, just like just like with us, we must learn to forgive and forget. We must also learn to get along. If you don't like somebody, hey, keep that personal. That, that only means it's a communication breakdown between you and that other person. That, that's why I keep saying it's the difference between a man and a male and a woman and a female. It's all with your mindset, your thinking. When you think like a child, you act like a child. But if you think and move like an adult, it's, it's totally different. That stuff wouldn't bother you. And then there's unity. The women, everything starts with the woman, with the woman. That woman is together, that means her house together, that means her children, her, her kids, her sons and daughters are together. So if that woman is thinking like a child, the kids, that man, all that um, all that uh, rhetoric in the house is going to be up. It was all about your mindset. It's all about how you think. People just need to grow up and find value within each other. I agree. So I got to uh, say good brother. I, I, man, I, hey, man, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give you the hand. Clap. I totally agree, man. Uh, let me see. It's a couple people uh, mentioned some things in the chat room. I'm going to go back and cover those things uh, for attention. Sadly, they haven't been taught how to be women, right and new, and we as women have to know uh, how to learn our work. It's a lack of self-esteem in women who lack it. Uh, uh, women who lack it are jealous of one another. That came from Lauren one on one. Except, hey, well, you know what? I didn't know. I didn't know how to address that. I'm not a woman. It's just something I noticed. And you right, Andrew. It is a mindset. It is a mindset. If you got chaos in your crib, you're going to bring that chaos into the street. It's going to filter into the community. It's going to filter into the tribe. And you're gonna, it's going to go on for generations and generations. Yeah, you know. our, our women also let these TV shows, these uh, reality TV shows, mold and shape their uh, thought process, man. Some yeah. people don't live that. That's just for, that's just for viewing the ratings. When they, you see them arguing and fighting like that on them shows. They don't do that, man. They're getting paid to be on there. But that rhetoric is, is, is leading over into our communities, man, to our young sisters. So they think, that that's a, they think that's how they're supposed to go out in society and act instead of having their own mindset, their own pride within themselves. If you see something going wrong, you're supposed to, you're supposed to address whoever you with. If you see a bunch of kids and one of them kids, two of them are supposed to say, no, that ain't right. But they go along to get along because peer pressure. They think they friends, oh, you ain't cool, you ain't with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. That goes again with their mindset, their thinking, what they see. What type of a people, adults they may be around. They may have good parents. They may have. But it's that peer pressure that they can't handle that's leading them to do wrong. And once they get, once they get caught up in that system, man, it's over. Just like, just like over the weekend when they robbed that guy, the group of kids going around robbing people downtown. Somebody in that group has to have enough sense to say, "Man, we doing wrong, brother." Yeah. It don't, it don't matter no more what, what community you come from, or what's your economical status within that community. You don't have to go out and act 
how they want you to act. You don't have to do that. This is true. So that's why they handed these hard sentences down to these kids now, man. That's not rehabilitation. That's crime and punishment. It is. That's crime and punishment. And that's what people are not addressing as well. It's crime and punishment. We're not rehabilitating each other. We're not getting people in a better place. We are punishing people without correction. If you don't correct behavior, you are damned to repeat that poor behavior. Uh, oh, Exactly. And as women, we have to know our worth. That was about Rhonda. It's like self-esteem, jealousy. If that little girl don't have a strong male in her uh, male figure in her life, she will fall for the BS all the time. Shout out to Low Key. I totally agree. It goes back to the beginning of the conversation. To the very beginning of the conversation, we said these men, these males are walking around acting like they're not acting like men. They're acting like little kids. A lot of uh, a lot of women it have been stereotyped of their, uh, by their mindsets, being disrespected, and have no self-esteem. From the brother DJ Chuck, as usual, Chuck on school bringing the pain. Exactly, man. Y'all, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. If you have a chaotic, if you are raised in chaos, or you allow yourself to be encompassed by chaos, you will have chaotic behavior. It, it, it just does this. It's your, your mama been saying, your mama said it to you your whole life. Watch who you hang with. Watch who you hang with. And people don't watch who they hang with. Uh, I was, you know, looking at the sports thing. And uh, Marcellus Wiley is starting to sound like Jason Whitlock because now he's working with Jason Whitlock. If you hear enough, if you hear stupidity long enough, you might start to make sense of it. And that's what it seems like Marcellus is doing. And if you're around some people who are justifying robbing, killing, stealing, and creating mayhem, you may think that's an appropriate thing to do. And then you'll justify it by saying, I'm young. But you'll be a young fool paying for that shit for the rest of your life. Yep. So we gotta catch him now, man. We can't give up on him. Right. This whole concept of these kids is just bad. No, these adults have been bad. We have let our kids into this wilderness called the United States of America and run them up. And now, instead of saying, damn, we dropped the ball, we want to blame them. No sub, I'm not going to be able to do it. I ain't about to stand around and watch you destroy these young brothers and sisters and blame them for our shortcomings. We dropped the ball. The people, like I said at the very first show, the people who were born 1960 or even 58 to about 78, we didn't, we ill prepared our children and now we are reaping the benefits of not doing the right thing. And that's just the bottom line. Yep. yep. We can right, play, man. we can pretend if we want, but the truth is always gonna be the truth. It's gonna be the truth today, tomorrow, and in the future. We did not prepare our kids for what was coming because we got, I believe, this is my, this, this, my opinion, we got comfort. We thought we made. Anytime you live in a society where the dominant society hates you, again, you got comfortable. And when you get comfortable, you cannot move forward. You will only move backwards. Yeah, and that's one thing I can never understand how you how you can be comfortable knowing that you have so many things of forces that's against you. So you you have to constantly be preparing yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. You take on anything that's going to come your way. You want that. So that's, that's why you need, yeah, that's why you need, that's why you need people. You need uh, unity. Because I can go to you and, and talk to you, or I can go to someone else and talk to them. And that's how we come together, bringing our minds together. To overcome anything, but we got to do it together. Yeah, you are one hundred percent correct. It's funny that you said spirituality. That was the very next thing I was going to talk about. Because I know you. <laughs> <laughs> what?
whether you are a Baptist, a Protestant, a Catholic, a Christian, a, 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 a Jew, a Gentile, a, a Muslim, a Buddhist, you pray the rocks, the ground, the earth, or you agnostic or atheist. It is not your position to tell somebody that they are wrong in their beliefs. Because I had a buddy recently. Uh, okay, one second. Low key just asked a question before I go into that. I knew. Do you teach your kids the streets as well as the law? You have to. They have to learn two educations. If one kid only learns one education, that means they'll be they'll they'll be lost in another. You can't just teach your kids education, education, education. See, when they come on the street, that means they're they're lost. They want to know how to handle themselves. So if you teach your kids two educations, the streets and law, they can combine each. That way they teach to their also their peers, hey, I know you lacking in something, so such, 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 such. Well, this is what happened if they stop us or we on the street. This is law right here. So you always have to have two educations. And the streets teach you to be tough in school. I mean, tough mentally. Yes. As well as physical. So y'all will always have to have two education. No doubt. No doubt. The difference between being street and being split. That's the difference between being street smart and being blood smart. Exactly. Exactly. You just have to be smart, period. Being able to adapt period. to any situation, no matter where you are. You can conduct yourself in a business That's right, good brother. You have to conduct yourself on the street corner and you made it pass any test that anybody put in front of you. That's the education of life. Uh, what I, uh, yeah, like I was saying, a lot of things in our community, I had a brother tell me, you know, he is not, he's not a, 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 a spiritual brother at all. He, he believes in science. He consistently says people who don't believe in what he is are stupid. Oh, that's stupid. That's stupid. They dumb. They shouldn't do this. Look, and I had to tell him one day, okay, I get that you believe in what you believe in, but do you know how many people Jesus did stop and get 50 stitches in their damn head? If Jesus is the fakest thing in the history of the world, because of people's uh, faith in Jesus, they have not shot, stabbed, and killed millions of people. I lie the same way. Jehovah Jireh the same way, Buddha the same way, or whoever you pray to, whatever book you read out of to, to obtain balance, those things have saved more lives than anything on earth. So why does it matter to you who I pray to or not pray to if the ultimate goal is to heal the community and get us in a better place? I just don't understand that, brother. What do you think is going on with that? Well, you know me, B, I, I, I dig into words, and you know spirituality means breath. Okay. So, so, one thing, so one thing I always say is, those are just different de denominations. And, and like we were saying earlier, I can't judge you for anything, but as long as I know your character, your character is good, you have good moral value standards, free national standards and principles, you are good. Man, that's what I'm talking about, man. It's just amazing how people, oh, no, no, you need to come to my church because, see, my pastor is teaching people the right way. Well, if I'm at this but church. You can, learn, you can read that same book and learn and have different meaning and determine and, and a perception about what's being said in that book. Exactly. In any book. Exactly. Because by me, my perception of the Bible is different than what they teach in the church. And uh, it is what it is. And people may agree or disagree with me, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. But I just, I have an issue with people telling other people, you're wrong. I'm not wrong for how I feel. This is how I feel. How can anybody tell you you're wrong for believing in what you believe in? If I lie, if I'm for you, I, well, going to speak on it, bro. Yes. 
Just like that word believe. If you break that word down, you'll find the word lie in it. L I E. Yeah. yeah. That's just me. Sorry, people. I just be like, I'm just a word. Uh, I mean, and a mother. Hey, man. Ain't nothing wrong with Hey, bro. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's why when people around me talking, that's why I'm always quiet because I analyze words and I know the words that they use and they learned in in uh, the, uh, the educational system. The educational system has taught us to has dumbed us down. So when you're around people that's intelligent, who know animology and that really know how to read, that's why it's easy for them to take advantage of you. Because you think you're using words that mean something, but it's totally different. Everything you go into has its own language, you know what I mean? Right. And if you don't know that language, that's why they just look at you like you're crazy. But they'll smile in your face and be like, oh yeah, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the police do it all the time. No, you don't know how to do Yeah. Yeah, man, but... Even though they dumb, too. I mean, yeah, not yeah. to disrespect all these you know, police out there, you know. but they don't know law. They just know procedures. It's just procedures. Yeah, yeah, and they don't even know all that because you couldn't learn all the procedures in what six to eight weeks, six months. Oh, six months! You couldn't learn all the laws in six months. Why do you oh, think? No. These, Hell no. Why do you think these dudes are uh, 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 in these courts posing as attorneys? Always had those books sitting behind them because they spent four years studying this stuff and still don't know. Yeah, that's what I want to tell the people too. If you go like to those fraudulent traffic courts, all oh, that's fraud. Uh, look at those books they got on those desks when they standing up there at that uh, bar. That's called the bar. When you go up there and the, the so-called administrative law clerk is sitting up high. He's sitting on a different plane. That's that's fraudulent, all that. But look at the books that they have right there, man. They have books right there. That same book I just told you is the same book they got up there, man. Yeah, man. And people, again, people won't take the time. That's why I was saying earlier in the conversation, you're not being redundant because... We get foolishness beat into our head every day, all day. So if you're going to repeat something that will enhance the lives of any of our listeners or, uh, or any of our supporters, that's not, I don't see anything wrong with you were saying it a thousand times if necessary because you're going to get 10,000. By the time this show ends and you move on with your day for the rest of your day, you are going to hit 10 or 11,000 negative things before you lay your head down each day. So, for you to say something three or four times in a row, so what? We need to get it deep. And like the music playing in the background, we need to hear your voice playing in the background saying, go get this book, go get this book. But, you know, but... But, uh, but with our people, you know, they already trained our people, our kids from the, uh, the fourth grade. It's called the fourth grade syndrome to whereas... Why are, why are young men becoming disinterested in school? And it starts at that fourth grade. That hmm. fourth grade is when the, our young boys start changing their mindsets because they know it's bullshit they're being taught by these European teachers. But they only going to misdiagnose your kids with ADHD, ADD, with all the giving these pills just long enough to sit there to be dumbed down by those teachers. So that's why you, we need our own teachers in there teaching our kids. But And they also need to be taught homeschool. It's okay to homeschool your kids. Right. It's okay to have my niece and nephew was homeschooled. Shit, they off in college now. But the only thing I say with that is they also have to get out in the community to know how to communicate with other people. You know what I mean? Yep. Exactly. But that's why you have after school programs. That's why you have uh, uh, social social gatherings, block parties and things of that nature. Athletic activities, exactly. bands exactly. and stuff like that. Exactly. 
you know, you exactly get, good brother. You get you get strong shoot. My, my cousin Mike, he homeschooled both his boys. Uh, his wife yeah. was, I, I think his wife was teaching again this year, and his and she teach yeah, her kids at home, and she go out and earn a check in the streets teaching other people kids. Yeah. And what we and when we when I say that it's a mental thing, it's a mind thing. You got to stop thinking as a child and start thinking as adults. I'm going to say this again. It's a book, and the brother is called Ibn Khaldun. This is a brother who mastered uh, sociology, psychology, mathematics, and he went all around the world. He was from Morocco. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, a great brother, man. And, it, and, and, and the people today, if you in politics, any of that, they study this brother. Hmm. All con- all psychologists, all of them have to read that book. Wow. Yeah, I got heard of it in the house somewhere. Ibn Khaldun. Okay, I'm gonna check him out, man. That's that's and that's and and again, again, we. This is why I say you're not doing the problem because every time you open your mouth, you share something with us that we know. We don't know what we need to know. A friend of mine homeschooled all four of her children. Yeah. I don't think it's anything wrong with it. You know, because if, if we re-engage with our community, our kids won't be out in the streets getting shot. Won't nobody be trying to come in our community abducting nobody. You know, what the, the old lady we used to get mad at and call her nosy, she kept so many people off your ass, you just don't realize it. You don't realize it until you become our age. So, again, Man. we... We have I get to Huh? Oh. Uh, 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 and we just don't realize the blessing that those people are uh, 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 presented to us until we're older and we no longer need those people. We need some more nosy ass old ladies, some nosy ass old men. And people who are engaged, those people are not in, uh, nosy, they are engaged, they give a damn about you. But if you, again, it goes back to what you and a bunch of the sisters said in the, uh, in the chat room, if you don't have these strong men and women around you, you are stupid enough to believe that these people are picking on you. To quote my mother, uh, uh, she told my son this, grown people don't pick on kids. So if, if somebody grown talking to you, you're doing something wrong. That's right. So uh, it's just a situation to where as we need to identify the value and the people that are in our community instead of devaluing them and acting as if they're doing us. I mean, we're doing them a favor by letting them live amongst us. Now, the last thing. I wanted to bring up in regards to this cold is this. We need to learn how to listen. And not listen, not hearing. God made it so you can hear. You have no choice but to hear if you have hearing. Listening is something you have to do. You have to make it a effort. First key to learn it. Exactly. First key, thank you. First key to learn. Well, what I find in my life is a lot of people are listening to come back what you said because they think they have you figured out. Okay, I know he's going to say, and I'm going to say this. How could you know what I'm going to say if I didn't complete the sentence? (laughs) No, no, no. I knew where you were going, but you just waiting on your turn to talk. You're not listening. You you have missed out on a potential lesson that you could have had and put it right in your hip pocket because you were eager to. I know the type of dude H rap is because H rap think this way and see this is what you be saying all the time, but that's not what I'm saying now. Or how about this? You haven't talked to me in a week, a month, six months. A year, 18 months, two years. Maybe I've evolved from the person who you assume that I am. So how about listening and hearing me out 
and then we will be in a better situation. How about that? But we so caught up in being right. What, I say this on my other show all the time. Where's the damn prize for being right all day? I just don't understand what is the beauty in being right. Do you get it? Did that get you an extra ticket to heaven? This, do you get four of the lottery numbers for being right? Do they bring a brain truck in front of your house? I was right. I was right today. And then you go your ass to sleep and wake up and you're going to be wrong tomorrow. The next time you wake up and don't be wrong about something will be the first time you wake up and don't be wrong about something. Rhonda says, listening and waiting for a response instead of listening to comprehend then respond. Exactly, Rhonda. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly. what I'm talking about. It's just, we have a thirst and a lust to be heard. Maybe it's because we've been oppressed all these years. Maybe it's because we've been identified as second class citizens. Maybe it's because all the mistreatment and disrespect that we receive, so now we have to be boisterous. I don't know what it's from. But I do understand that the worst thing that can happen between two people is a misunderstanding. And the easiest way to have a misunderstanding is to keep talking while God put them two things on the side of your head to hear twice as much as you talk with the one mouth that you have. You know, it's just amazing that you could, you will, you will be surprised. I guarantee you, the next conversation you have with somebody, whether it's just fun, shits and giggles, or serious as a heart attack conversation, I guarantee you, you you know what? I, I challenge anybody to have the next four conversations in their life, and somebody don't say, "I thought you meant." I don't know about nobody else. That drives me clean up a damn wall. When somebody say, I thought you meant. And it's only you and them talking. How the hell you thought I meant? And I didn't say that. I, don't, I just don't understand, man. What, what do you think this quest to be heard or acknowledged is? Or... or the, it seems like an inability to respect what the next person is actually saying. What do you think uh, that comes? What do you think that comes? Uh, somebody's ability to think to think that they're smarter than somebody else. Whew. I would have never thought of that, but yeah, I, ne I did never cross my mind. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I would agree. With when there's you. actually, there's actually no such thing because we all can learn from each other. Right. Ain't nobody smarter than the next man. You just might be more knowledgeable. But if I pick up that same book or if I go and study that same thing, I become knowledgeable just like you. Right. But we learn every day from each other. Well, we everybody should. has all. Everybody always has something to offer. Yeah. Yeah. My cousin used to say that all the time. God didn't make no blanks, man. Rest in peace, you know. God didn't make no blanks, man. Everybody got something to offer. But it's. And then when you. I'm listening. And then when you just think you walk around knowing everything, man, that that becomes like a vain person, man. That's in the Bible, too. <laughs> yeah. You can't be vain, man. It's all about understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And, be, and see, what something I, this is a problem I run into a lot. I don't know about you guys. This is something I run into a lot. And that problem is this. People assume because you speak with confidence that you think you are uh, better than or smarter than or above them. No, I'm just confident arrogant. in what I say. Yeah, yeah, you arrogant, man. You need to, you need to do something <laughs> about that. No, nah, man, I'm just confident in what I say. Now, if you show me I'm wrong, I'm cool with that too. But 
I get that all the time. Oh, well, you think you always right. I, I do. Yep, I'm not going to lie. I do. And you know why I think I'm always right? Because I try not to talk when I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And if you show me I'm wrong, thank you for hooking me up. Appreciate it. Let's move forward. Like yep. Loki said, they need attention. Okay. Yeah. I was reading the chat room they one second. The oh, uh, I got you. Uh, it's like Loki said, they need attention. And a person who feel like they can't be taught, uh, a person who feel like they, they can't be taught either. When a person says, I thought you meant they're really uh, not comprehending the conversation. Thank you, Chuck and Ron. What were you saying, Keith? I'm not, uh, I know. The righteous way to go. Shit, go ahead. I'm, I'm just listening. Oh, no, no. You, you were about to say something, you know. Those, uh, uh, those are two excellent points. Those two excellent points that you said. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with both of them, man. It's just like, you know, like, uh, like I was saying, uh, you know, people, uh, 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 you, you arrogant. Like you said, you arrogant. No, I'm confident. And it, uh, Lauren and a couple other people said it's a self-esteem thing, man. Don't get mad at me because I'm supremely confident. You know, tell you what, I, if you want to know why I'm so supremely confident, it's not because I think I know everything. It's because when my mama used to yell at me, she used to say, you ain't stupid. No matter what I did, why you do that? You ain't stupid. You ain't stupid. So I never thought, never assumed that I was unknowledgeable or stupid about anything. Maybe you should have yelled at your kids right. and told, maybe your mama should have told you how great she was and you would feel the same way about you. I can't control it. Yep. You know, I do it to my son all the time. Like, like, I remember once my son was struggling with his grades, and then he got his grades all the way up so high that he he picked up his uh, report card, didn't even think it was his. And then he, he puffed out his chest then, yeah, yeah, check these grades out, Jack. And then he asked me, ain't you proud of me? I was like, nope. He's like, why not? I got all A's. I said, you the only one that didn't think you could do that. And he was like, oh, yeah, you're right. And my and, and when and, and you brought up the ADHD medication, they tried to put my son on that medication before. And you know what I did? I said, look, tell y'all what, give me ten weeks, and if he don't straighten up in ten weeks, y'all can give him whatever y'all want to, right? So I come right home, I say, Yo, BJ. He said, What's up? I said, people at the school think you stupid, man. He got offended. I never had another problem out of BJ and Gray's again. So if, you put, if you put the confidence in your kid to let them know they can do whatever they want to do and however they want to do it, they'll never waver. But like, like, hey, again, like you, you quote the Bible earlier, teach your kids the right way and they'll always return to the right way. So, yep. you think I'm arrogant? You think I'm arrogant? I'm not. I'm just confident. I've never met, I've never seen a challenge that I couldn't tackle. And if you think you can't tackle every challenge that's in front of you, I'm sorry. I, I just don't think that way. I don't care if it's surgery. If you give me enough time, I'll cut you over. That's just the way I feel. I might be dead ass wrong, but that's the way I feel about my ability. Put some of that confidence in you. Don't try to reduce mine. Don't try to take man out of my soul because you slip. You know what I mean? That's right. You know, it's, it's okay to be confident. But with that said, man, I want to thank everybody who, uh, I want to thank the brother I knew for helping me out tonight. I want to thank each and every one. Uh, everybody for being in the chat room, for participating. And remember, this is built for this network. I'm HRAP B. Uh, uh, what I do at the top of each show that I host is I leave a health fact. Today's health fact was on the truth about chocolate. If you want to go back and listen to the top of the show, it is uh, 14 minutes long and it's telling you about the benefits of chocolate and, and how people have demonized chocolate. And at the end of the show, I give you a fact about it's going to be something about 
a, 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 a history fact about our community. Uh, 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 it's gonna be history. Hey, I got, I got, a, I got a, I got a history fact. I got a oh, black okay. history fact. Yeah, this is. That's what it is. Go ahead. Can any, can anybody tell me why they changed Black History Week to Black History Month? Uh, I, I mean, know it happened. has to be called Negro Negro, Negro history. history Week, but then they changed it to Black History Month. I don't know why they changed it. I know why allegedly Carter G. Woodson created it initially to celebrate uh, uh, what's his name with the Afro. I can never think of that. I always want to call that man Christmas Addicts, but I know that ain't his name. Uh, and I always want to call him Martha Scott. What's the man's name? He was an abolish, uh, 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 abolitionist. Uh, uh, it's his bro- Frederick Douglass. I always want to call Frederick him Douglas. Christmas Addicts. I, I don't know <laughs> why. I, I always want to call him you Christmas him at- Addicts. Him and Mark, him and uh, what's his name? Mark, Mark, Mark. They they look alike. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I always want to call that man uh, Christmas Addison. I don't know why. I know it was initially started yep. to celebrate yep. his birthday. I don't know why in nineteen what seventy two they expanded to Black History Month. Speak on it, bro. That's it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I had to check a couple of people uh, about a year ago on Facebook when they was complaining about February. They gave us February. No, we established that in February. Stop allowing people to say they gave you something that you established, that you took over, that you made prevalent in your community. Ain't nobody gave you. Well, they took. Yeah, just, well, they took two days out of February and gave it to January. Hmm. They took two days out of February and put it with January and, and only gave the shortest month and the coldest month of the year to the so-called Negroes to let to make them think that their history is short. All that play, plays and ties into hmm. that uh, slavery stuff that went on to make you think your history was short. It didn't matter. Mm. Well, yeah, you're right, B. Uh, Frederick Duck, his birthday is in February, so that's why right. they changed. But you see how they took you from being a so-called Negro to a so-called Black. Yeah, that's that's the great, that's one of the greatest tricks ever played. And then uh, 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 Black don't mean nothing but profit. And it, exactly, they took you from African American. They took you from Afro American to African American. It's all. Thank you, Reverend Jackson. Good looking out, bro. We needed that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. Good looking out. Good looking out, homie. <laughs> Good looking out, blood. Oh, fuck you. Hey, you get a residual check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that Pepsi uh, distributorship. Now your, yep. now your uh, uh, and uh, Honda, right? And Honda and Toyota, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Good looking out, bro. You've been, been helpful the whole way, We really appreciate you looking us up with the nicknames. You know what I'm saying? You can just call us Poochie. How to feel better? <laughs> But, uh, call me Nook Nook. <laughs> yeah, right. Call me Nook Nook. Uh, but look, Jones, somebody, I'd have been, we'd been better off, uh, Ralph. You're a real, real good guy for that, man. We really appreciate it. But I want to finish thanking everybody. DJ Chuck, Rhonda S., Rhonda Hawkins, Lauren, Lisa Dukes, Low Key, my man Patal, Big Illinois, I can't go through the list because I only got a few minutes for this other program. I'm going to kick off. I got 30 seconds. I want to thank each and every one of y'all. Brothers going to work it out every Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow, I think they're in the culture with the homie DJ Knox. My brother DJ Knox uh, on the Built This Network. Him and our brother Cheers Roundtree. Mooka Dean burning it down later on that evening. Uh, um, Mooka Dean and then DJ Knox again Friday. The traditional lineup would be Monday, the number one Chief Rock of Jersey Vern weekend review show at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tuesday, my show personally, 
the end of the bench sports and culture podcast talk about sports i really talk about the culture and i mix in little sports y'all never knew that y'all thought i was just talking about sports i'll be trying to educate people on the community as well and let people know what's going on i'll be sneaking little knowledge i'll be sneaking with the sports in the knowledge uh yes sir and, and then uh as you know, seven days from now, uh, 165 hours from right now, this show will be restarted. The built, uh, built for this network show uh, that is brother gonna work it out. Hosted by myself and number one chief rocker Jersey Burn. I forgot the hip hop attack show uh, uh, Tuesday afternoon, hosted by DJ Knox. If you're real hip hop head, DJ Knox gonna take care of you on Tuesday, and then theory of the culture. It was, uh, uh, it's going to be on Thursdays, Mookie Dean, the Groove House. I'm telling you, Mookie Dean, if you like real good music, come in, listen to Mookie Dean, listen to DJ Knox. It was, uh, it's awesome every weekend. Sit back, relax, kick your feet up, sit it back with your lady and have a good time and listen to DJ Mookie Dean. And then the dopest show on the network, uh, uh, Cheers Roundtree and, and my brother DJ Knox. Uh, uh, is theory of the culture show where they talk about pop culture they have a good time you never know what they talk talk about it's always good and then the dopest mix of the week with dj knox don't slap your boxes we ain't got no bail money for your show on friday because you know by the time friday rolled around supervisor say something you don't like you be ready look it's 2010 it's 2020 let me get you these 10 we don't want you to give them the 10 because you might get three to five so Tune in to DJ Knox Unwind. DJ Knox burning it down. And uh, uh, if DJ Knox still listen, I want him to put his Roundtree album. It's on. Uh, uh, my brother J A Shabash just put something in the uh, in the in the chat room. I don't know what it is. Educate us real fast, cause I got about a minute thirty seven seconds on that. Uh, J A Shabash, let us know what's going on with that. And uh, yeah, right, continue to support the network. We are growing slowly but surely. Tell a friend and tell a friend. And remember, this is the most important thing I'm going to say about the network tonight. Whether you came in at the very beginning, in the middle, at the very end, this is a, these are podcasts. Podcasts are on-demand entertainment. You can listen to this today, a week from today, a month from today, a year from today, and get the same information. You don't have to Hey, We appreciate you coming in. And saying hello, D. Great, Susan Sparrow, J. A. Shabazz. Uh, I'm gonna see if I get everybody's name. Then I got 55 seconds. J. A. Shabazz, Susan Sparrow, D. Great, Big Illinois, Lauren, uh, Lisa Brooks, D. J. Chuck, Batar, Rhonda S. and Rhonda H. R. C. Delightful and Lady J. D. J. Mukadine. Our very own DJ Mookie Dean, uh, I said Big Illinois, Chris Reinhardt, Joe from Houston, uh, Shelly B, uh, L- Low Key, Ray the Kev, uh, DJ Knox, the brother I knew on the co-host side of the game, and uh, Big P, uh, that's it, man, I got everybody, man, I acknowledge everybody, thank you guys for tuning in, thank you for the support of the network. It's going down every week. I'll let your boy. Black History Fact coming now. One love. Social media saw some sharp comments on Old Town Road's The Ham. Country artist Megan Lindsay. It's got plenty of country elements, and it's as country as anything on country radio. Billboard responding to the backlash by saying their decision to take the song off the country chart had absolutely nothing to do with the race of the artist. Lil Nas X had his own response on social media. Just because Old Town Road has funny lines doesn't mean it's parody. It has a theme. Anybody with ears can tell I put some kind of effort into that song. And there are, of course, successful African-American artists in country music. Not about that. And some of us remember the days when Prince couldn't get played on rock radio. So it's about some fans hoping that all genres might be so restrictive. Let's face it, being open to new sounds, new artists, new influence can be good for any kind of music. Michael? All right, thank you so much, Chris. And Bobby Bones, he's the host of the nationally syndicated Bobby Bones Show, and one of the most powerful and respected people in country music has joined us now. Bobby, thank you for joining us. Get right to it. Is this a country song? Yeah, why not? I mean, I think country music, it's always about the message. And 
Funny how white folks are outraged over Lil Nas X and the number one song in the country right now. White folks are saying he's disrespecting the legacy of the true cowboys. Really? The true cowboys? The original cowboys were black. They're talking about boycotting Wrangler. Saying he